applause. Please welcome from Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, Carl Cock Diesel Cockerham. Son adversaire dans le coin rouge porte la culotte blanche, pèse 167 livres. Across the ring, his opponent fights out of the red corner, wears white trunks. He also weighed in at an even 167 pounds. Il est invaincu en cinq combats, cinq victoires, tout par KO. He is undefeated in five professional bouts with a perfect five wins, all coming by way of knockout. Il a été médaillé d'argent au jeu du Commonwealth en 2006. Accueillons de Montréal, Adonis Superman Stevenson. Adonis Stevenson, Carl Cockerham, getting ready for action. Let's get you down to the official instructions. Okay, gentlemen, you both received my instructions. Protect yourself at all time. Obey my command at all time. Touch gloves. Good luck. As we check out the matchup board right here for this fight, Adonis Stevenson, 5'11", to Cockerham, 5'9", same weight, just half an inch, which is nothing for Stevenson. You know what, Cochran, his physique looks really strong. He looks like a durable opponent. We'll see if Adonis can set off that tone with that, that same power with that left hand and box his way and just and, and out muscle and out power this guy. And he's trying to get through right away with that left uppercut right from the beginning of the fight. Yeah, round one, starting off with fireworks. Stevenson in white. Cockerham in black. Stevenson maybe getting a little bit anxious here. He's had all those early KOs thus far in his career. Maybe looking for another one here tonight. But Cockerham, he's from Las Vegas, Nevada. He's had some good sparring. He's been in there with good competition. He's been in there with Andre Durrell, a rising prospect at super middleweight, Enrique Ornelas. And generally, Ryan, when you live out in Las Vegas, you see a lot of different things in the gym. No, 100%. You're, like, you're, you're in the, uh, the real hotbed of, of boxes where guys are coming through there for sparring all the time. Um, he, he, he's, he's in there. So I know Adonis Stevenson is not a look that he hasn't seen before. So he, he, he just getting that understanding, even though he's coming off very sloppy off the ropes, swinging through with his shots, he might have that, that understanding on weathering the storm a little bit and then getting through the fight. Yeah, well, he didn't lay on the ropes and eat those uppercuts for another 20 seconds like right. some of Stevens' his opponents before, but he is taking them. And a good right hand to the body by Stevenson. That's something we have not seen from Superman yet in his career, that punch variety throwing something other than that left hand, he hasn't had to. No, he, he really hasn't, and, and now he's trying to evolve on different shots as he's seen that nice left left body shot, and then coming over with that left hand and that left uppercut again. But he's trying to get through with some shots. Coker him back to the ropes, and he, he's got to get off of there if he wants any hope of staying in this bout. But he is crafty. You can see he's eating some of those uppercuts, but he's not getting drilled flush too often, and that's the, the sign of a good veteran, and as we mentioned, a guy who's seen a lot of looks in the gym. Stevenson approaching again, creating distance. Oh, and then there's Co Cockrum with that with that left winging left hook over the top. I'm gonna I'm not gonna call him Cockrum. I'm gonna call him Cock Diesel. Cock Diesel. That's, that's his nickname. A rather unfortunate nickname, but I'm, unfortunate. I'm sure he chose it on his own, which uh, <laughs> you know it's, it makes it more unfortunate. I should hope not. He chose it on his own. His corner gave it to him. I would prefer to be called Superman rather than Cock Diesel, <laughs> but. Alas, Stevenson creating distance. Nice left hand from Stevenson right there, just measuring his shots, especially when you're on the ropes like that. You want to make sure you, you get your room and, and start measuring your shots from right there instead of smothering yourself and not getting through it in th those shots. I was going to say, he's not getting anxious. He's not smothering himself when he has Cockerham along the ropes. And he's going to get a lot, of, a lot of opportunities to work on this, it seems, because Cockerham wants no business with Stevenson in the middle of the Big ring. Big uppercut from Stevenson again. Come back over that left hand. Cockerham looked like he might go down there, just stumbling on his footing. He doesn't look all the way there. Stevenson goes downstairs, back up top. And there's, and there's Carl coming back in just with those winging shots at the end of the round one. And you know what? Carl's very strong. His last fight out there, he, he was in there with undefeated Andy Lee, and he lasted, he lasted six rounds solid with him. You check out the replay. You see Stevenson trying to find and measure that left hand. He's getting through with it all day with the body. Then coming back over the top two times, three times with that uppercut, four times with that uppercut in a row. And then measuring again on that rope right there with that right, right hand and then coming back to the body. And then finishing with that left uppercut. Right into that body shot and then bringing up that left uppercut again and then stepping back and getting that chopping left hook right over the top. 
Round two, Adonis Stevenson, Carl Cockerham. Stevenson in white, Cockerham in black. You can see him already backing Stevenson down. But uh, the first round was the opposite of that. Cockerham backing into the ropes and allowing Stevenson to basically get off whatever he wants. Right, Stevenson showing a good knowledge and a good appreciation of levels going downstairs and back up, but he's doing it almost exclusively with that left hand. But you know what? When you're fighting a, south, a left handed guy, it's sort of seeing things differently. Now, I would figure that Carl would actually seen this look before and stop leaning right into that left uppercut. And having the, the experience that he has, he has over 25 fights, you would think that he would understand not to keep leaning into that left uppercut on that side. But at the same time, all Cock Diesel is doing right now is just using the ropes, trying to retreat, and not trying to step away. If he would just throw the right hand just straight down the middle, that's Superman's kryptonite right there. Yeah, but it, instead, he's backing up, he's backing... He's going back in a straight line. He's completely square, and he's allowing Stevenson to get his footing where he wants it, his lead foot outside of Carl's right foot, pardon me, his, his left foot, and Stevenson basically has a straight line for that left if he wants to throw it. 100 percent, and you know what? The one thing I'm starting to just really like with Adonis, he's taking his time. He's picking his shots. Even though that left hand is there all the time, might as well take it all day. And he looks, but he's being patient as he's taking the shot. And he looks super excited coming down to the ring, so I thought maybe he'd be uh, hyperactive when he got in the ring. Not nice the left case. hand again, and bring her that left uppercut again. And Cockerham, you know what? He's fighting to survive, it seems. And that's what we see a lot out of these veterans that we get these young prospects in there with. And Cockerham is the gleaming example of that. He is not fighting to win whatsoever. He's just looking to make it the full six rounds, and that's probably good for Adonis if he can go the distance tonight. There's that right hand from Cockrum there trying to just slow him down, but he's not throwing anything else after that. He's just throwing that one shot and, and hoping that Adonis would just go away, but Adonis is just being very poisoned and measuring off his shots and, and getting through with that left hand. And here's Cochrane now, now trying to get some things going for himself with that right chopping, right hook. Yeah, he's, he's swinging back with these hope shots, but this is about I mean, the likelihood of that. It's like the heavy bag hoping that you'll leave the gym. And Cochrane <laughs> is basically acting like a heavy bag here tonight. Adonis just teeing off. And measuring that, that jab to the body. When, you, when you're fighter in there now, Corey, and, and the fighter, the, your opponent's really not doing much, you could take that range in that time on dictating yourself with that jab and not really worrying about anything coming back because this guy hasn't done anything for almost three rounds now it's going into the third round I don't believe anything's going to change throughout this fight no and and we've been looking for that jab out of Adonis he hasn't had to throw it because he hasn't had to keep anyone off of him through his first five fights but uh, let's take a look at the action from round two I see he's coming back over with that nice right hook and then cutting the angle and getting through with that uppercut again but now you see Marlon Wright, the referee, just warning him, might watch holding him behind his head and trying to get through with that shot. And you see Cockrum just coming through with that nice little short right hand just to keep Adonis away. Stevenson completely in control. You can see him not breathing heavy in the corner whatsoever. Likely no panic whatsoever in his corner. And Cockrum's corner, probably none either because, as I mentioned, it looks like he is... He, 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 he's, he's here to survive, and, and it looks like that's what he's going to do for the remainder of the fight. 10-8 round, you can see in the first round, a 10-9 round on the scorecards. More than likely what you see across the board at the judges' table. Round three, Stevenson and White, Cockerham in black. Now Stevenson should just be just trying to practice getting through some straight shots. Now he's inside, let two hands go. Nice right hook over the top from Cockerham. But he's only throwing one, one big shot at a time. That one's not enough, especially when you're behind the way you're behind right now. Now, if you're Cockerham, Ryan, do you maybe want to get on the inside and look for those short punches? Because that's something Adonis has never really had to do in his pro career. And it's something you don't normally have to do in the amateurs either, and that's fight on the inside. Right, but you know what? You're right. Dude. Anytime, anytime Adonis gets in there, Cockerham's got to get used to letting two hands go, even if it's that right uppercut, left hook, right hand. Finish and start with the right hand to keep keep that left hand of the guy away. Like he's trying to come in with that right hand right there, but he's coming around the glove instead of coming straight down the middle. And Adonis, uh, maybe listening to our commentary, he's, nice throw, he's throwing that Adonis. jab out a little bit more and preventing Cochran from getting inside. Well, mind you now, Corey, this is the most rounds that Adonis has done in his whole professional career. Yeah. 
So he's trying to he's trying to say, I've never been here before. Let me just get some shots off and see what happens with that jab. And he's sort of he's somewhat forced to box a little bit. And Stevenson still coming forward and pushing that jab out a lot more. We are looking for that. He's pushing it out there, at least going through the motions. Cockerham trying to come forward, and that's something we haven't seen out of him at all. He's been laying on the ropes almost exclusively, applying a little bit of pressure, something Adonis really hasn't had to deal with in his pro career. And Adonis trying to get set with that jab there. Stevenson still looking for that left, but the pace has slowed down considerably, not firing off those combinations like he was in the first two rounds. Is that a good thing or a bad thing, Ryan, in your estimation? Because he's, he's not anxious, but he's also, you know, he's, he's not burning himself out. And you know what, and, and it's a good thing because it's the first time he's ever been these rounds. Secondly, it's, it's, it's against a gerbil, tough guy that might not quit when you're b banging him up the way he is. Even though he's not doing nothing too much, the shots are, aren't hurting him. And he's, he's firing one and two big shots that settles Adonis down, even though it might hit Adonis on the arms. But Adonis is finding a place. You see how he just settles him down with that little short right hook? And a couple good right hooks to the body. He doubled that up just a moment ago as well. A different look from Adonis Stevenson. Coming down the stretch here, Stevenson absolutely in control of Carl Kakarev. Still looking impressive. Round four coming up, Stevenson and Cochran. Corey Erdman and Ryan Grant here with you at the Montreal Casino. Adonis Stevenson in white, Carl Cockerham in black. Round four here, super middleweight action, and these two going at it once again. A lot of two-way action is not what we've seen so far, Ryan. No, no, you're seeing Adonis just dictating his pace and having his way with this guy, Carl, from the beginning to end of the, of the rounds. Carl just keeps going from rope to rope, corner to corner. He's not trying to do anything different. Uh, it, it just it sort of looks like he's just waiting for that one lucky shot that might just settle Adonis down, and it's not coming because you know he's not throwing any. Yeah, he hasn't even thrown. I mean, he's thrown maybe two or three punches. He's thrown one little short right hook that landed on Adonis, and that's about it. Adonis has had nothing at all to worry about. And as we've mentioned in the previous rounds, Adonis is throwing that jab a lot more, and he's making it difficult for Cockerham to throw something even if he wanted to. And so, yeah, he's just trying to measure him out. Good right hook to the body and another left hook downstairs and come back over at the body shot. Stevenson seems energized after that flurry that Cockerham threw, most of which landed on the elbows of Stevenson. He's almost annoyed that Cockerham would bother to fight back after this long. Yeah, well, you know, you probably don't, you probably, it's, Don's probably don't expect him to fight back because he hasn't been fighting back for the whole fight. And Cockerham... Good left hand from Dodonis again. And back to the script for Cockerham, from corner to corner, from rope to rope, he's back in there. Not really slipping any shots either, though. He's looking to, he eats a shot, and he'll tie up. He's, I guess we call him durable. He's also pretty brave, just standing there, uh, eating shots from a good puncher like Stevenson. But mind you, Stevenson looks like he lost a little zip on his, on his power also. Never doing these rounds ever in his life as a professional as well. So it could be a little bit of a challenge where he's like, whoa. I feel a little bit tired right now I'm trying to just dictate the pace off this fight. I'm doing rounds for the first time. Well, for a late bloomer like Stevenson, who started boxing in his mid-20s and who really turned pro in his late 20s, they have to move him quickly. He only had 40 amateur fights. His last fight out, they put him in there with Etienne Whitaker, who's fought some good guys. And usually at this point, showing some color. Round five here, Stevenson 
Adonis Stevenson and Carl Cockerham, super middleweight action. Stevenson and White Cockerham in black. We mentioned before the break, Cockerham had uh, a little gash on his face, a little color. Stevenson starting to bust him up a little bit, and really that had to be expected, Ryan, because he's been eating flush shots in the past two rounds and basically doing nothing else. And you know what, if, if, if Cockrum keep, keeps this going the way he's going, he's going to have a new sponsor by the end of the night named Rival Boxing because those gloves are going to be <laughs> tattooed right on his forehead. Stevenson still taking his time measuring Cockrum. We mentioned he's never been this deep. He's never been out of, out of the first round as a professional, so this is significant that he's in round five. And you know what, uh, Corey, it's not bad that fighters get to get rounds and get to work in. It, it gives you experience. And now you're seeing Cocker, it looked like he's trying to get into the fight and try to get something done a little bit by backing up Adonis. And you have to imagine, too, that the corner of Adonis Stevenson, Howard Grant and everyone in that camp, is not unhappy that he's getting these rounds. In fact, fighters' camps at this stage in their career are probably happy to get the rounds in to see what their endurance and what their conditioning is like. No, for sure. And it, it gives you that, that extra test on uh, on how your body's going to react when you when you, when you you do have to get in there with higher opposition and, and, and see what happens. But at, at the same time, Don is picking his shots, being slick, getting through with nice, nice shots, being very po poised and patient on defense. So it's a good, it's a good learning experience for Adonis. And nothing, nothing at all coming back from Cockerham, but still, I mentioned it's significant that he's in round five. Can he continue throwing punches for six rounds? I think that's really what we're looking for. It's like if you ran a race and there's no obstacles. As long as you get to the end, you know if you have the endurance. Let's throw in those obstacles a little later. A few punches coming back. For sure, for sure. Stevenson still measuring Cocker. I'm looking to throw that jab out. His punch output has dropped off just a little bit, but again, he, it, it could show that he's picking his spots a little bit more and not just letting them fly like he was in the first two rounds. Nice right hook to the body from Adonis. And he's being very, 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 very patient. I'm, I'm, I'm liking his, his professional approach to this, where he's picking the shots, he's looking at seeing what's open. He'll set up the jab to create an opening for the body shot and then finish back upstairs or finish back to the body. And he's seen the durability of Cockerham at this point. So he, he likely isn't looking for that knockout that maybe he thought he would get in the early rounds. He's looking for those scoring shots. He's looking to go through his arsenal. And that right hook to the body, that's something that we've seen a lot in this fight. Something we hadn't seen early on in his career. And, and he looks like he's fighting a nice little pocket for um, Cockerham when he's landing that right hook downstairs, Adonis. But I also, I'd like to see, I haven't seen him throw that right hook over the top. Let's see if we can see some more variety in the next round. Round six coming up. Here we go. The sixth and final round. Adonis Stevenson. Carl Cockerham Stevenson in white. Cockerham in black. It has been an absolute shutout for Stevenson thus far. But the deepest he's ever gone in a fight in his career. And he's coming out swinging in the sixth round. He's looking to keep that KO streak alive. And he's trying, he's trying, he's trying to close the show right now and say, look, I still want to be known as the real Superman with knockout power, but sometimes you go out there and you try to look for it, and sometimes it doesn't happen. So just be happy with the work productivity and get the win and pick your shots like how he's picking them right now. Cocker, I'm sticking to the script. Nice uppercut from Adonis again. Eating those uppercuts and leaning against the ropes. Basically all we've seen from Cockerham at this point. And maybe he can make a nice little living doing this and getting beaten up by prospects, but there's nothing I would want to do for a living, right? Not, not at all, not at all. Like it doesn't doesn't pay to get beat up like this. <laughs> Big uppercut again from Adonis. That looks like that might have hurt him. Stevenson really opening up there on Cockerham. And the patience that we're seeing from Adonis Stevenson, Ryan, how much does that have to do with his amateur pedigree or the fact that he just started late as a professional? Well, you know what? You know, I would say it has more with, with maybe him starting boxing at a later age because... Maturity. He's mature already. He's already a man. But that being said, when you have fighters that are already mature and already have their, their self of character... As an athlete, it's sort of hard now. Well, him being a very athletic guy and, 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 and learning it a lot faster than most, 
it also breaks down that if it was a fighter that had just a little bit of boxing experience and had some bad habits prior, at least now Adonis is starting to get the understanding a little bit better. Instead of just boxing, he's understanding on what he's doing instead of just throwing shots and trying to be a busy fighter and, and, and shoe shining and being flourish. And not a show off with it. Like he's stepping back, he's trying different things that you just saw right there, stepping back, trying to get that left hand. And that's all about maturity and understanding the game a lot better. And you can mold a fighter like that. A oh, 100%, 100%. And, and when we say raw fighter, we need to put this in perspective, Ryan, as we go into the final 30 seconds. Adonis Stevenson was 35-5 and five as an amateur, so that's 40 fights. He's had five fights as a professional. This is a guy who really has been in the ring in a fight 40 times, basically, in his really? career. 45 True. times. So True. if he's making mistakes and he hasn't made too many of them, I think they could be excused. And, and you, you do have a big point. I didn't know that he only had like 40 fights as an amateur, or 30, like 30, 35 wins as an amateur. But um, nice uppercut from Adonis again, and a good little squeeze victory. Well, not squeeze, a clear out victory. Squeezing out the life. <laughs> I think we can announce the victory before <laughs> we go to the uh, official announcement. But Adonis Stevenson showing his offensive arsenal, and uh, we assume the sixth victory of his pro career. Let's get the official decision. Mesdames et messieurs, voici maintenant la décision des juges. Let's now go to the judges' scorecards. Le juge Benoît Roussel remet une carte de 60-52. Judge Roussel scores this bout 60-52. to Les juges Procopio et Gay remet des cartes de 60-53. Judges Procopio and Gay both hand in scorecards of 60-53. to Le gagnant par décision unanime the winner by unanimous decision, Adonis Superman Stevenson. Adonis Superman Stevenson with his sixth professional victory. And uh, that KO streak, it gets debunked. No more KOs for Adonis, but this is probably a good thing for a young fighter to get those rounds in. And of course, you know, it, it's not about... It's not all about the KO. It's about the win at the end of the day. And be happy that he got the win and he got the work in. And that he did. Adonis Stevenson, your winner.